Hello, welcome to Yarn Hellions. It's season two, episode 28, and we are so happy to have you here. We are going to cast on for our one skein make along, uh, which a lot of you already posted that you're going to join, mm -hmm. so we're really excited. Um, and we have some other things to share with you. I think some sock knitting. Mm -hmm. I cast on a few new things, which was so fun, and I'm um, ready to share all sorts of stuff with yeah. you. Yeah. Have our co host, Ripley. Oh yeah, that's you. Who, me? Uh-huh. Who, you? So we'll see. We're taping on a Tuesday, which is a little more foot traffic around the Hildebrands. Mm. We'll see how she does, but Sunday she did is okay usually the, quite quiet. The last, last time she did times. like once yeah. or twice, so she's got to make sure she uh, defends the fort here. Yeah. I left Phyllis defending the fort. Oh, good. At, uh, at home. Dottie goes in her crate because she can't be trusted, but Phyllis, like you leave her in her dog bed and she's that's where she'll be when you come back. <laughs> Uh, so what's new? Uh, what is new? Uh, just trying to decide what I want to talk about first. Um, so it looks like we've both been like making some healthy changes. You've been meal planning and, um, have you been working out too? Yeah. Exercise? I have been just, um, this is like the fourth week. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, are you going to a gym or just I like at home? I do, um, I've been going to classes, so okay. I don't do very well, like unsupervised, mm. like I need someone to tell me what to do. So I've been going to a place and they have rowing and spinning, um, and then like weight, like a little, like, you know, half hour, mm. like weight classes. Um, and I really like it. I nice. like all the instructors, especially the rowing instructor. He has a really good taste in music. Mm. And then the whole time it's an hour. And so he'll like he keeps your mind off it mm -hmm. so he'll be like who is this and who's the background vocals and like oh, and i know some about music but not yeah. anywhere near so i'm always like kind of stumped and it keeps yeah it's really fun so that makes a difference i think Exercise for me i can't combined with trivia I yeah like it. it just it depends on like i've tried enough classes to know like i i and especially being like more on the quiet side, mm -hmm. like I don't go into like a fitness class. I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm Sarah. Oh my right. god, you know. So it's nice, <laughs> like if somebody's like like that and make like making everyone participate. Mm -hmm. Like I would think I wouldn't like it, but I really do. Mm. It makes like it like a really nice experience, I guess, instead of like just going to a gym and like being on a yeah. Gym. So if which is. Yeah torture it really is and i like i can be you know at home and work out for 10 minutes by myself i'm like oh god yeah. and i think of myself as an i mean i am an introvert sure. but I, I really do enjoy that's that's when i stick to it the most mm -hmm. and do the best is when i'm in a group class True. so you can look um it's mind body is the app i use and then you can either just like shop around and drop in classes for like it's usually oh. like 18 or 20 dollars so you could do like yoga you know spinning whatever and then i kind of did that for a while till i found a, one place i really liked mm -hmm. and now i get their like monthly membership so it's online it's their virtual classes now they do have some but i've been going um use the app to like schedule i see so you can okay. see like what's in your area you yeah, can yeah. say like buy me tuesday afternoon you know kind of mm -hmm. like, so i really like oh that. cool yeah yeah i've been like <sighs> needing to make some changes too because i <laughs> i went to the doctor last week because my so my blood pressure has been high since last year and so i'm on meds and whatever and i but i have like a like an at-home blood pressure cuff so I can like stay on top of it, make sure I'm okay. And I've been, I've been like checking my blood pressure and it's been so high. And I'm like, to my, I emailed my doctor. I'm like, oh my God, can I increase my medication? Like, I don't know what's going on. This is terrible. She's like, yeah, go ahead and increase it, but you need to come in and you know, we need to like check it in the, in the office. And she said, bring your home monitor and we'll check it against the one in the doctor's office. Cause maybe it's just miscalibrated. Mm. So thank God that's, what is wrong my my home blood pressure cuff is like 15 points high Jeez. so but still so i'm like you know like over the winter i've been really uh extra sedentary it's so hard with the, the weather the weather impossible. sucks yeah. yeah and like you know so i realized so they weighed me at the doctor's office and i gained a freshman 15 since last year and i'm just like oh shit like like i knew that i'd been gaining weight because i like all my my pants are too tight and my clothes and like i can my face i can always tell in my face my face gets fuller when i when i gain or lose weight mm -hmm. um and like i don't care about that but my body hurts. I'm yeah, like, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be 38 in a couple months. And like, I just, I 
feel like I need to make changes like more vegetables and I need to move more and so and I hate to admit it to you but my mood for the rest of the day is better like yeah. when I do that and I get home I usually get home and I have time enough because I start late like for most people I start at mm. 9 30 um like I, I'll catch myself I will be walking into work like whistling really or like singing to myself and I'm like oh my gosh yeah. this really does work <laughs> like <laughs> Everyone says it, and it's really annoying to, like, get up <laughs> and go. But there's not one time I've gone and been like, oh, I shouldn't have gone this way. Right. I know. I know. So. But, yeah, I always think that I hate classes and, like, going in person and being around people. But now that you're saying that, maybe I just haven't found the, the right classes. It's kind of fun to, like, shop around, too. So, hmm. so then I get, like, real, like, well, this yoga place had this, this, this yeah. and this place had. And then you, <laughs> I mean, you end up trying a bunch of new stuff, yeah. which doesn't hurt. And then you find what really works for you. Right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I've tried like, everything. I've tried bar, and you know, it's mm. fun to just like, drop in and be like, I have no idea what this is. Yeah, like, I'm gonna try it. Cool. Yeah. Wow, I'm impressed by your bravery. Because even I, I was like thinking of uh, joining Planet Fitness just to like, you know, it's like ten bucks a month or oh, whatever, yeah. just to go out of the treadmill and like do my little weights or whatever. But I'm like, what if I do the treadmill wrong and I look stupid? I know. <laughs> I, know. And I do the same thing, and. Um, I really do better in a group class and it's nice to have like someone like watching what you're, you know, mm -hmm. like making sure you're doing it right yeah. and like a professional, you know, and I'm just, yeah, I just know myself and I would walk on the treadmill and go home in 15 minutes. So. Yeah. Yeah. I hate the treadmill. I'm just, I like to walk. And so I'm waiting for like, just waiting weather. for the weather to change. I heard but it's then... supposed to be warm the end of the week. Oh, thank God. We had the coldest day. Yesterday was so cold. It was, it was so like cold and so windy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. We're over it. This is about the time in Ohio when everyone is like, even people who like winter, this is tough. The end of March. Yeah. Um, well, St. Patrick's Day, it was like 70 degrees and gorgeous, sunny. Gorgeous. Gorgeous day. Um, um, and then um, I've been meal prepping and mm -hmm. not eating out as much which is my mm. thing i get lazy or tired or <laughs> overworked and sure. um yeah i choose bad food options so um i and i get home late enough mm -hmm. that i don't cook in the i've never cooked in the evenings like ever so um yeah on sunday it's it's a pain but like really you can do it if they're real simple things you can do everything in like four hours um and then I usually do like like a simple thing or two and then something that takes like a little more like mm -hmm. a soup or something. Um, I love making soup. And then I've been doing overnight oats, mm. which is really fun. And yeah, so that's helped. Yeah, we had the um, same thing. Like over the winter, we got really just like you keep making the same six meals and it's just we were ordering food a lot. Uh, so easy to do. Now. Yeah. So we like I was like, listen, I've been trying to like make little changes mm -hmm. slowly rather than, you know, overhauling my whole life all at once. Oh, yeah. um, so this week uh, we decided to meal plan. Devin and I, we sat down together and like picked some recipes that we wanted to try and made a, made a shopping list together. Um, so we have some, like we're gonna make uh, like Brussels sprouts and pork chops one night oh, yeah. and he made um, like chicken vegetable soup on Sunday and so ju we're just like because I, like I hate the idea of dieting I don't want to diet no. I don't want to get into like that whole like mindset but mm -hmm. I just want to eat more vegetables you know yeah. and less candy I want my body not to hurt so that's the goal more vegetables less candy um, and move more so um, Bridgerton season two came out on Friday. Mm -hmm. So what did I do this weekend? I <laughs> yeah. watched all of Bridgerton season two. It's my favorite book. Kate's my favorite heroine. One of my favorite scenes, which is the um, croquet, I think they call it palm oil, mm. um, but it, there's like a black mallet of death and like the, it's like such a great like thing in the books with like mm -hmm. the family, like are super competitive and she joins right in and they did mm. it so, so well. Casting, fantastic. The sisters were so good. I, I can't say enough. I just, uh, and I, mm. I, you know, there were people who were like, well, this was different than the book and this was different than the book. And this is, I was like, it just, you gotta just lay back and enjoy it. Like, yeah. it's like the costumes aren't anywhere near like 
historically accurate. Right. I mean, they are like spangled and like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you just, I mean, come on. Like, why can't, and of course the music's not right. like, traditional music. You just gotta like soak it in and enjoy it. Yeah. There's so much good, like fun tension and looks mm. and so I just I'm, I'm so happy I was so excited to see that in your notes that it was <sighs> back because I didn't realize it was back yet and I've been waiting so oh. that's what I'm gonna do yeah. this week although just... um Devin and I are in the middle of re-watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer oh my gosh. yeah last night we watched the episode Will it be spoilers if I... No, I think it's okay. been 25, 25 years. <laughs> 25 I think years. we're okay. So uh, we just got to the episode in season two where um, Buffy and Angel, they make love. Oh and my God. Angel turns bad. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good. Um, he, I mean, he is... I just loved Angel. Oh, oh, are you? Wait. Well, no, I am Team Spike. But okay. like, when you start the show, you're like, there's nothing better than right, this right. broody, dark. And then there's one who's broodier and darker. But Ooh, yeah, yeah Spike. At first, you so don't mean. love Spike. Um, yeah, David Boreanaz, I love him in. Did you ever watch Bones? Not that much. No? I, yeah, I should have. That was the. Um, that we, Devin and I watched that show. And then I started reading the books. Which, like, if you ever watch the show Bones, it's about a forensic anthropologist, I think. And she, so there's, like, all the d most disgusting, horrific, like, murders and whatever. Like, she's the one cleaning up the maggots and the whatever. So it's re really graphic, uh, just anatomical, <laughs> she's just syrups and fluids and whatever. <laughs> Oh my God. So uh, so I was like, well, I'll read the books. Like, they can't be any worse than the show. They are so disgusting. They yeah. are just so graphic. Uh, but really well, very well written. Is that Patricia Cornwell? No, it's Why am I? Kathy Wright. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think I read the first two or three. And yeah, they're, they're fun and very, like, very, if you're into, like, the forensic details, they're, they're heavy on that. Um, nice. Yeah, so those are good. Um, what else, Buffy? Buffy's amazing. Buffy's amazing. Girl, we gotta chill out. Um, oh, my my nibbling, my nephew Scotty, who's been in the NICU for a month because he came he came too early. Uh, he's he might be going home next week. He keeps pulling out his feeding tube. Oh, <laughs> it's like you know one of those tubes that go in the nose and down the throat, and he he's pulled it out like five times. So the finally, I guess the doctor was like, you know what? Fine, we'll just leave it out because he's been eating well, like, you know, formula and breast milk, just fine. So um, if everything goes well this week, he might be going home and then I'll get to meet him. I'm very excited. Um, babies, I have to finish his, uh, his blankie too, which I, I was gonna bring, but I showed it last week and it looks the same, just longer, <laughs> so I didn't bring it. But I'm almost done. I should be able to finish it this week. Shall we cast on for our yeah, makeup on? I would like to so do that because then I'll have something to do with my hands. <laughs> um, I actually need to get my pattern real quick. So for the one skein make along, I put all of the all of the like rules or whatever on they're on, in an instagram post and i'll link that in the show notes below so you can go check it out because i'm not going to try to explain them uh verbally again because that was if you watched the last episode <laughs> <laughs> it was like word word spaghetti um so basically the the whole point is to use up make a project during the month of april using up uh at least one skein of yarn um and then we'll have at the end um, you can share your finished projects on Instagram and use the hashtag and tag us, and then uh, we'll pick a winner and there will be a prize for participation. So you'll use up a skein and then the winner will get an additional skein. And we realize that that is counterproductive and we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> add, add, take away one from your staff, yeah. add another one. Uh, so the prize <laughs> is a, um, a skein of DK Merino from Megs and Co. And the colorway is, uh, it's called Museum of Play. So there's that, it's like a peachy, pretty peachy color. 
So what are you going to make? I'm going to make a hitchhiker. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard how fun they are. So, oh, so, good. Um, so I got the pattern and then I've got my needles and I was, it was fun to like look at all the stuff I bought at festivals <gasps> last year. Ooh. And this is, um, it looks so nice caked up, doesn't it? Um, deep dyed yarn. Um, velvet underground, oh my God. sparkle, um, figment base, 92% merino, 8% lurex. I'm jealous. That's going to be a fun hitchhiker. I know. <laughs> I was like, I, this is like the perfect, perfect. I wore um, a hitchhiker. I saw. Because I was like, I want to wear everything neon that I own. So I, yeah, I put my, one of my hitchhikers on. Oh, this nice. Is, I had found a sock set that had, like, the little mini, and mm. I forgot you did that. Yeah. I just could do that, too. Got oh my hitchhiker. Gosh, I'm ready. Um, I, what are you doing? I'm going to make um, another one of these. It's a, uh, we talked about it in the last episode, and I couldn't remember the name of the pattern, but it's a fluid Slouch. slouchy beanie, um, and the pattern's by Karen McCall. Uh, this one I made in, oh, uh, Blackbird Fiber Studio yarn, my friend Jesse. Um, and then I modified it a little bit. I added a Pico edge to the bottom. Um, so I'm going to make one of these. The pattern, because I was down to that or hitchhiker, so <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do that. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to make mine in, uh, this is DK Weight, um, by... The lemonade shop um, it's called kitchen sink and I don't know if you'll be able to see but it's like it's the, a gray base and it's got like multicolored speckles in it's it. really pretty so I actually bought this months ago with the express purpose to make one of these hats um, so that's what's gonna happen so you smell Phyllis and I brought a, I had an extra little skein coat Cause I like can't have yarn without these now. They're really, really nice. I bought, um, she makes, uh, it's, so the skein coats that I really like, there many people make these, but the ones that I li like are by uh, Precious Knits, I think, is that? Yeah, PreciousKnitsShop.com. Um, I think she's on Etsy, but she makes mini ones too. So like if for your what? sock sets, yeah, they're, they're the like perfect for 50 grand. Yes. Oh, so I was so like, great. well, I have to get those, uh, mm. for my little socks that I've been making. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a diehard skein coats fan. What are you doing nosy? So y your pattern is like, Cast on two stitches. I just cast on two <laughs> stitches, so I'm, and I'm done. done. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's so funny because I was like, oh, well, not hard. I think mine's like cast on 120. Knit so front and back and knit one. Let's row one. Oops. One of my favorite tips that somebody told me like early when I started knitting was, if you are knitting a pattern that's on Ravelry, um, go to the, like where the advanced, so, so you know how like on Ravelry you can look at the other projects? Yeah, yeah. If you go to the advanced search, you can sort put the projects by most helpful. Most helpful, I've done it by like most popular or something, yeah. but how does most help, or cause it has like tips in it? Yeah, shut up. The hit, there's a really good one in the Hitchhiker, um, uh, most helpful or whatever that like saved me when I when I've been making mine you like put um, a ring stitch marker on your needle before you do your the first increase okay and then it the the ink the the ring marker will move as you um, as you keep increasing so then when you get to the row where you need to decrease you'll like you'll see you'll be like oh, okay there's eight this probably isn't making any sense. It's not. Okay. <laughs> Just, but now I know how to look it up. Yeah. Go look it up because it is a really helpful tip. <laughs> and it, just because I haven't like gotten far enough to like understand like what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I might need more skin coats is the uh, real important takeaway mm -hmm. here. 
I didn't. I don't actually even know how many I'm, I need to cast You're on. I didn't look it up. Adorable. There's one full of cat faces. I actually. I got so excited. I twist. I balled this up like two days after we taped last time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to cast on so bad. Yeah. I had to hide it from myself because I was ready. So this is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I've really never done like a like a black like yarn mm -hmm. i haven't really done much neon lately either so oh i'm God, excited for both love that yarn all right i need to cast on 98. okay just be more, my end be more than two so i want to share a, a cast on tip oh no you know what this cast on it's supposed to be the you need a crochet hook. It's supposed to be a, like a crochet oh. cast on. Dang it. And I didn't bring that. And I wouldn't be able to like do that and talk anyway. So I'll just do a German, twisted. German twisted cast on. So, but you know how like when you do a long tail cast on, you have to estimate how much out. yarn you need mm -hmm. and you either inevitably way over or way under. Yes. So I have a trick where um, if you wrap your yarn 10 times oh, around one. your needle. I probably talked about it before. It's know. one of my favorite tips. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. If you do like loosely 10, mm -hmm. that's about how much yarn you need to cast on 10 stitches. So, so then, then you can just, yeah. So like two, three, four. How many did I say I need? 98. So 100. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Oh, I got a knot. I feel like yarn is like a metaphor for my life. <laughs> Constantly chaotic and tangled. So then here's my tail. Nice. I'll have enough. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's used to it. <laughs> she's, she's used to it. Just having yarn around. Yeah. So I don't think we need to like, I'm not gonna cast on all of these. No, okay. um, to, like a ceremonial cast on. That's right, <laughs> yes. I thought about casting on like yesterday just so I would have it, but that's cheating, Christine. I think so, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and I feel like for you, like with a brand new pattern, you need like brain, Yeah. yeah. brain energy so, to. Luckily I'm off today, so I'm gonna get oh, there the you go. going. I have a finished object. Ooh, show me. Uh, it's the retro world. Oh. So, um, it's my yarn, and I don't know what color it is because <laughs> I uh, did the cowl like a little while ago, and I this was the other skein from that. I'll have to figure it out. But look how nice the top turned out. Oh, I just, I mean, such a good pattern. Like, it's good job, me. <laughs> <laughs> It turned out really, really cute. So, um, and I really like that that one stitch wasn't bad. Like I watched your little video, and just the pearl two behind was not bad at all. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And you made yours a little bit shorter, yeah. I did. I didn't do a slouchy, so I cut off that in between because um, I saw it was like getting to here, and I'm like, ah, uh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it actually is pretty perfect. Nice. Um, yeah. Mm. Very cute. Yeah. And I should try a super slouchy one sometime, but I don't know why I like like the beanie type. Hey, we like what we like. Mm. Um, mm. So you know, I've been knitting socks. I know. So in my head, I'm like, oh, I could make, I could design some retro world socks. What? Yeah, and so I so. Um, let me go into my. Uh, my finished objects. So I've made my socks. I showed these in the last one. Um, these are the Socks Exploration Shadow Wrap Heel by Denise. I keep talking and then I don't know what I'm supposed to be saying. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. They're the. Okay, they're the Socks Exploration Shadow Wrap Heel. It's a vanilla sock pattern by Denise DeSantis. Um, and. They've got this, it's a short row heel, which I very much enjoyed. And so I've been, so I finished these and then I immediately cast on another pair of shorty socks. That's so funny. I was going to ask, oh, did you cast on another? Look at you. Mm -hmm. I know I can't stop. I don't, 
you understand why hating. people love them now. Yeah. Yes, I get it. They're cool. For hating socks, for I've been knitting since 2014, so what, eight years? I um, now I get it. It's hilarious because when it, we you started guys. the podcast, we both said we <laughs> yeah. hated socks, and we both now have knit. Uh, so I'm I'm just like trying lots of different um a cute edge. Is it just one row? The little orange. It one? is. It's like a peekaboo. Oh. You like fold the heel or the the cuff, so you like knit always <laughs> um you you knit like an inch in one color and then switch and knit an inch and then fold the like peekaboo color inside and seam it seam it down so it makes wow. like a like a folded edge it looks like it's perfect like one little row like from mm -hmm. the outside it's great thanks and then this is um advent this is super fine Ooh. yarn co at Ad another advent mini i love the minis for um the like contrast uh, heels and cuffs and toes. So anyway, I'm like trying all these different techniques. This one, this heel is a German short row heel. I like German short mm -hmm. row. Which I liked a lot. Uh, and so like now I feel like after this pair, I'll like have sock construction down enough in my brain that I can start modifying mm. it. And you know, cause like the, the thing with the, um, the retro world patterns is they're knit inside out. So I had to figure out what stitch, like how do I, what stitches do I need to do on the outside so that when you flip it inside out, it looks the way I want on the inside. So that's, Whoa. that's the next, I know, did I just blow your mind? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that will be the, the trick for um, doing some retro world socks. And then I thought I would do some Fora Minosa socks too, which would just be like a plain sock with um, that like, Eyelet, yeah, holy pattern on the on the instep. Oh so, not only a sock knitter, but a sock designer. Sock designer. Oh, oh, who knew? Um, speaking of advents, um, Ray on needles at the ready. Um, picked this pattern. I think I talked about it a little bit ago. Um, it's the Brioche Adventure by Jonathan Tallow. <laughs> um, I should show a picture. So. You haven't seen it. Ooh. So really good for advents. Um, so I cast on not, I didn't keep, I made a mistake in calculating and didn't keep one from 2021. So this is the 20, my 2020 advent calendar. And now I'm kind of like, oh, I should have kept a 2021 one. But um just i'm just right at the beginning mm -hmm. so i've got like my beginning colors which were all purple so two that were kind of similar which is not what i'm on right now which you can't see but then i've got i'm gonna go to actually look that's what you have oh yeah so um yeah it goes like pinks then peaches mm -hmm. then grays so Setting up brioche is not fun, mm. but I did it and I looking like it's right. But, um, I, yeah, I, I do not <laughs> like somebody could tell, I really didn't think the beginning of this was right. And I ended up like adding one extra little thing. And, but, um, I think it's right now, but I did not like figuring the out the setup. It's a, um, I cord edge. I was going to say my, like, I love it. So it's gotta be I cord. <laughs> That's really pretty. So, um, what is her name? Kristen Lehrer, who's Bull and Vine. Um, I watched her <clears throat> brioche YouTube setup video years ago when I did the Harlow hat. And I've tried so many other, nothing helps me like just the way she explains it. And I, I just love it. So I went and I swear on his, the one row where you start, it's a you would start with a yarn over and you can't do that and i'm i there there's something that i'm reading wrong so i hmm. just did a knit one and then started with hmm. the yarn over and then had to like fix it on the next row i'm back on track okay so um i think i'm so i'm really excited now so you do like a little like an inch of these two colors together then you um do a few garter rows and then you start the next color and then hmm. you just keep um switching out the last color as you go oh, so fun. i'm we'll see if i'm gonna keep it up for all 24 colors but it's so pretty but 
I, yeah, it's gonna be a lot. Is it yarn held double? No. It's not, but okay. each for brioche, you do each row That's twice. Right. So, I have, it's not much to show right now. I have never been able to do brioche flat. Because it's, it's a four row repeat when it's knit flat, and it's only two oh. rows when it's knit in the round. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. I've only done it in the round. Maybe that's why I was tripping up. I was <laughs> like, this is, I'm having a hard time with this. But I'm on it now, so. Cool. Okay. Well, Good for you. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, and then my two colors, it didn't help either that it's two color and they're very similar oh, colors. Yeah. So one has just like a little bit brighter purple. But it is hard when you're doing the 24 colors together to get them different enough, but same enough that they like mm -hmm. flow together. So. Um, after I get these two, they're pretty different. I've had this in my queue forever. And <laughs> now we'll see. Um, I love the pictures and I always love freaking huge oversized things. <laughs> and now I'm like, what did I do? So well, you, you can check back in with me because we'll see how this goes. But, um, uh, <sighs> Thing, regrets yeah like um and this is an older one of hers it's an andrea maori it's um the everyday shawl and it's mm. just enormous mm -hmm. and um let's see, show another picture like it's really big it's like almost like a big big wrap so oh, there you go so that's, you know of course like in the photo you're like this is great mm -hmm. and it looks so good and i want to wear this like everywhere well once you get this going um this is a freaking huge look at this wow yeah is that fingering yarn too uh -huh. wow so um a few things i um actually had bark over dye when we were doing another batch um for the there's just like little chevron patterns in it and mm -hmm. i didn't want like anything too loud so i had one uh the Ro a few romney skeins um so now it's like almost it's like purple and blue mm -hmm. but solid enough here i'll show you it's like solid enough that you like you'll be able to see the pattern oh okay and, yeah yeah um but I just did the first <laughs> like little pattern row. So we'll see. I I think it's a gorgeous pattern. I'm just not sure about all of this knitting. So I'll check back later. Um, what was the other thing about this? Oh, I chickened out of doing a long tail cast on because I thought <laughs> this is gonna just be too much. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I'm gonna try a new cast on like, and I've done like German twisted for hats and, um, I'm going to try a different thing. And I picked like, it was like a lion brand, like a knitted cast on. Mm -hmm. I did it and it wasn't very fast. It took a long time. Hmm. I get on the next row. I thought it's like a little like misshapen and was looking really weird. I'm like, it'll just like, you know, like, mm. like the next row or two, it just like evens itself out. Yeah. Oh, it never did. Really? It looked like I should have taken a close up. I mean, it looked so bad. Like, hmm. I was like, if I spend 400 hours and knit this shawl, I'm going to just lose it if this edge <laughs> yeah. looks like, I mean, it was like up, down, Weird. big holes, little holes. And I was really careful when I'm, mm. I, I did it all. You know, so anyway, back to long tail. So <laughs> should have done your tip, but um, I just kind of like estimated because I could rip it out. So I just mm -hmm. estimated like how many. And now this cast on looks so much better. And um, which cast on is that? This is long tail. Okay. It's so much better. It's just a good it. long tail is just like a good it is. all around. Uh, so this just good for everything. I feel like it's hundred, like around 200 <laughs> cast on. So, wow. Um, is that, I can't remember the same, the last time I cast on. Well, that's three this week for the, yeah. So see how I do. So I, I so I've been knitting socks. So naturally, I had to make some sock oh lockers. Oh my gosh! On my Glowforge, I I don't know if you'll be able to see them because they're clear. That's yeah, really hard to see. <laughs> Wait, I've got a poster board. Oh, okay. Well, they say "fuck" on the bottom. <laughs> um, people, I put these on Instagram the other day, and everyone's like, "Oh my god!" Like how much for those I need a set and but you guys these were such first of all they're such a pain to um to knit uh, to cut Where, can't tell um, if it... 
Is it? Can you tell if it doesn't? No, I don't know. Okay, well, fourth try. Um. <clears throat> so. Yeah, I'm not gonna be selling these because these take, they took a whole sheet of um, acrylic. That cost. Yeah, they just would be, it, and to add, to, to like ship something the size would just be cost prohibited. They'd have to be like $40 or something. So I'm not gonna send these, um, uh, sell these. But for myself, these were uh, pretty fun to make. I made them like, you know, the perfect size for my heats. You gathering information um i'd never used sock blockers before and i get it like you know everyone's like you don't actually need sock blockers it's but they're fun, fun for you yeah. spend the time to make the socks and you have a knitting podcast like right <laughs> yeah. come on so um and they were good for like taking you know taking photos they like just you know they just look nice mm -hmm. so yeah those were fun to make I didn't do anything with my, my socks are like this close to being done and I started like eight other things. Um, oh, and then I have, I cast off my shawlography and I bought a pillow. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to, I have to um, block it, but that's what I have. And I was going to just sew yeah, it, hold it yeah, onto a pillow. Well, there you go. Yeah. So I got like this, it's like an oblong pillow from Target. Mm -hmm. And the only thing is it, of course, like not like exactly. So like this part will probably like wrap around to the back a little mm -hmm. bit, but I figure, you know, it's, I think it would be nice. That's better than like, tr well, A, trying to um, rip out all this. Yeah. Yeah. And I really worked hard. So yeah, I will still have it around and can enjoy it. But yeah. Did you see um, Stephen West just came out with the shawlography blanket? What? And it's it's that pattern, but it's a full circle, so it's freaking huge. What? Yeah, the so you can buy. I guess Stephen and Penelope, the yarn like his yarn brand or whatever, they uh, put out kits for like yarn How to much buy. Would that be? They were like four hundred dollars. Would have to be. <laughs> Which like because that's five five skein six skein. Yeah. yeah, they were. It was insane. So. No offense, uh, Stephen West. I will not be making a shawlography blanket with four hundred dollars worth Ooh. of yarn. I am really nervous about this Comic Con, so I applied. I put half of my booth down. Never got a reply. That was like mm, before the last time we taped. Uh, no, like not even like, hey, we got your thing. We're looking at it. Um, it's four weeks away, <laughs> and like. I don't have that much to bring and I need to start time, but I really, it's kind of hard to, um, it would be nice start if they would respond. I would like that. So, and then I'm worried, oh, you're just going to respond like two weeks before and be like, oh, Hey, sure. Bring a bunch of yarn. Surprise. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, and it would, it would be, be nice. So, um, and then I kind of have a plan for like some geeky colors and things like that, but mm -hmm. it's like, that's not going to happen over so right um just with um i had some little special order things to do so i um this was an extra color that came out of that which is a sparkle i like that which has no name yet you know what it reminds me of is mm. the um the 2022 pantone color of the year oh, very perry nice I don't know if you're allowed to like use that color name, but that's what, it, I mean, it's like a periwinkle color. Yeah, yeah. So that still needs, so um, regardless of Comic-Con or not, I'm gonna have some extra colors. Um, once I have enough, I'll do a shop update. Cool. Um, I've been terrible about posting. I've gotta get back in to posting more often. On Instagram? Yeah. Or just on your site? Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard. I, so I've been like really trying to, like plan out my Instagram content and like, you know, make relevant posts and like promote, you know, the things that I'm working on and whatever. And it is so hard. I, I scheduled like seven posts this week. It took me like three days to <laughs> between, you know, you have to like, like taking a photo or, you know, even finding a stock photo or whatever, if you're going that route and then writing a description and finding the relevant hashtags and scheduling it in your little scheduler. And it's, like, it's just, it's, oh my it's God, a lot of work. It Instagram's looks like it just happens. Lot. And once you do it, it 
does not just happen. Yeah. Um, and what's new with your shop? Well, uh, I don't remember because I'm looking at this sock in my hand <laughs> instead of my notes. Um, so for the Kick-Ass Flare Club, um, let's see, it's now April. So we're going into the um, mm -hmm. second quarter of 2022, which is a new theme, which is sweet treats. And the first uh, for April, the flare is um, it's a donut with pink frosting and sprinkles. And it says, donut talk to me. Um, and then May will be, uh, it's a gummy bear and he's like holding a little sign and it says barely listening. Um, and then the, the June design is an ice cream cone that says, I scream, you scream, we all scream into the void. <laughs> uh, so, um, if you're a Patreon patron, a pa <laughs> Patreon patron, you can go on my Patreon website, uh, and vote for your favorite gummy bear color. Um, for May, you can choose either red or green. Um, and then the, all the sea creatures from the first quarter. Oh, buddy, it's not a snack. <laughs> it's in a Ziploc though. <laughs> I'm sorry. So these will be available. Um, the, the Q1, um, Sea creatures stickers are going to be stickers and pins will be available in the super secret shop on my website that you only get access to if you're a Patreon patron. There's a special password. Um, so we've got the January Hangry Shark and the purple blowfish for February, and then the introverted hermit crab. These the hermit crabs will start shipping uh, this week. And then I also made mini stickers. I can't remember if I showed these or not, but some of the other, like the rejected uh, designs um, that didn't make it into the like full uh, rotation, I made mini stickers. So we have the fuck gender roles seahorse. I don't know. I never know if you guys can see. And every time I do this, I'm, I think of those reels. <laughs> that, um, yeah, I can't even remember her Instagram handle, uh, the big brain energy, uh, what is this? An octopus and a little narwhal who's sad. And he says, bummer dude. So those are all, you can get those if you're a patron, um, in the super secret shop, mm -hmm. they'll eventually in months from now be available to everybody. But, um, if you want to get them now, you have to be a patron. So that's that. Um, what else have I been working on? I'm working on a, um, a coven collection, Ooh. Uh, like witchy inspired um, for, uh, I've, I'll be making t-shirts and stickers and uh, maybe mugs. Um, so merch, witch, witchy merch, uh, I should have saved it for like Halloween, but I'm bad at planning. So <laughs> that's that. And then uh, I'm also working on getting um, my fabric designs on Spoonflower and Society6. Mm -hmm. So I have like a fabric collection that I designed, but the stupid like formatting to like turn it into fabric is just, there's like a lot of math. <laughs> it's just, it's like, it's really boring, honestly. So I've been avoiding it, uh, but that will be coming soon. Okay, so books. I have been reading a lot of duds and actually not reading, just canceling me too and then the best thing you ever showed me was making that dnf shelf because now i like six months later i'll mm -hmm. be like oh i thought i was gonna try that author man either boring just not my style just I, I there's like so many reasons to not finish a book and there's so many good books out there there's no reason i do I haven't even usually i go to 30 percent i haven't for some of these it's like 10 percent, and i can tell too like if I'm, I usually read like 10 to 30 minutes a night before I go to sleep. If I don't like thinking about like picking it back up like the next mm -hmm. night, I'll be like, I'll start something else and see, I'll come back to it in a few days. And then it's been like two weeks. I'm like, it, there's, I should want to go back to it. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, there's, it's just not for me. So there's been a lot of those that I yeah. <laughs> won't talk about. I'm in the same boat. Oh. I think I like started and quit like eight books in the last couple weeks. I mean, it's just, I don't, 
what's in the water, man? They yeah. just, everything, I don't know. It's been so hard to find something that just like wants to stick. Yeah, and then a few, I thought um, like at the bottom, I check books out from the library and then it goes to my Kindle app. And then once you finish like the app at the bottom is like, oh, these are kind of like what you've been reading. Mm -hmm. So there was like a mafia one. I was like, <laughs> oh, I'll try that, but it wasn't in the library. So I was like, I never buy that many books. So mm -hmm. I bought a mafia one. I bought like another one. Boy, both of them. I was like, oh, they're like choosing books for me. These are going to be good. Both not good. Uh -huh. I was like, well, never mind for um, Amazon's mm -hmm. uh, choosing because that was terrible. So anyway, good book. Um, I had read The Rake Guest on audio a while ago and like talked about it and it was wonderful. Um, and I did this on audio too, but it was a different narrator who was still good, not as good as that first lady, but The Duke I Tempted by Scarlett Peckham lovely cover so because i was getting duds i went back to someone i really enjoyed as a first time reading her and um did this and it was really good a little little darker on the edges than normal hmm. historical romance but always really interesting like the last one the heroine struggled a little bit with alcoholism hmm. um and have some like dark you know like things you're trying to like overcome same yeah. with this um he has like some dark things in his past and um there's a little bit of S and M. There's some mm. like spicy things in that way, but um, it's good. He's very buttoned up, very uh, of course a duke. Um, Naturally, yeah. And um, his sister is bright and jolly and younger and hasn't. He's like protected her from a lot of like what he's been through. So she's throwing a ball, and um, heard there's this. Um, woman who like runs a greenhouse and like the next county over and she can do like these magical like floral arrangements and she has to have her for this ball coming up of course. and she's getting ready she's getting kicked off her property and moving her greenhouse all of this stuff is happening it's all terrible so she just says no she's like i'm I'm in a bad place. I'm not doing this. Mm. So they both, she gets the brother to drive her over to the greenhouse <laughs> and said they will pay her whatever, um, whatever price she wants. And of course she really needs the money. Of course. And he, because of all like the construction and stuff on his estate, there's no men to like help her move. So she was like, well, I need 12 guys to help me move my mm. greenhouse. Plus, you know, 50,000. I mean, it was like some yeah. crazy amount, you know? So they say yes. So uh, that's like the first 30 pages and it's, it's just fantastic. That sounds very cute. fun. Yeah. Um, speaking of spicy S and M, did you read Ravished by Viking? It came in yesterday. Oh. I just started last night. I'm so mad. <laughs> I kept checking on it. I'm like, what place am I? Cause <laughs> it was at the library, so I didn't want to buy it. But then it was like, you're second in line. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, so very how exciting. Did, how was the, um, discussion? Uh, it was fun. Um, I think only one other person read uh, in my, my discord group read the book. Um, so it was, it was interesting, like talking about it. It's so hard to talk about smutty stuff with other people. Like, <laughs> and that book is just so over the top, like ridiculous, oh my gosh. just graphic sex and whatever. So I was blushing and the whole time. I forgot it was set in space. Yeah. That's hilarious in space. to me. <laughs> I was reading it. I'm like, oh yeah, they're in space. Uh. <laughs> um, I have a rom-com, which this is the sequel to um, It Happened One Summer, which I love. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite books from last year, um, which um, this is the younger sister. So Tessa Bailey. And this was super cute. I didn't like it as much. I'd say between the two, the first one's still my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, that's the one she's kind of like Alexis Rose. She's spoiled, um, gets into like legal trouble because mm -hmm. of like some dumb prank. Um, and the stepfather sends her back to um, like the hometown where um, her dad is from to kind of try and teach her like to, you know, become an adult. And she, um, they live above the dad who's passed away the dad's bar and like so there's a bunch of like 
town people and like gruff fishermen and so um that was like the first book so this book she's really into music she works on a movie set mm. wants to be more assertive wants to become not a composer but someone who would like choose movie soundtracks she's really oh, into it fun. um and then when she was in town last time this guy was on the same boat as the gruff fisherman from the first book. Um, and he's kind of a ladies, ladies man and has this like reputation around town and has like, from his point of view, it's, it's really interesting. Like just that, um, no one has thought a lot of him because his, of his, like his looks, he just is like a pretty boy. So that's like mm. anything anyone's ever expected of him. Mm -hmm. And he feels really, like bad about himself because mm -hmm. that's all he feels like he has like ambitions in life but nobody takes him seriously because like he's supposed to just like be out in the town yeah like, you know so um he doesn't know how to like move forward in his life so um it's very cute that does sound cute i um i have the first one on my list to read yeah do it i just oh and they're sp they're spicier than the um cover reflects too and she is an absolute hoot on social media. If you're, she, um, I'm sure she's on Instagram. I follow her on TikTok, but Tessa Bailey is, she's oh, hilarious. She? I started, I didn't write it, shit. I wasn't gonna talk about it cause I, it was a book I abandoned. Okay, so The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. Like I said, I abandoned it, but it's like one of those books where like you can tell it's like, you know, it's good. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I know this is a good book. It's well written. It's, you know, like the characters are um, interesting and the uh, the plot is kind of fun. So it's a rom, it's a, I guess it's a rom-com. It's, it feels a little bit more angsty than like your typical rom-com. Um, but these two people who uh, dated in the past, they get in a car accident on the way to um, a wedding and so they, one of the cars is like busted and totaled or whatever. Uh, but they're, so they're going to this wedding like across the country and the one friend is like, hey, just come with us, like sit in the back seat or whatever. And so these two people who, their exes, they get stuck together in a car for a road, you know, a nine hour road trip or whatever. And there's many shenanigans. and. I probably read like 30% of this book before just getting furiously pissed off. And if it hadn't have been on my Kindle, I would have thrown it across the room. Mm -mm. Even though it's like, I acknowledge that it's good. It was well written. Like I said, it's, it was good. It just was, I don't know. The, the characters are like 22 and they're, you know, I don't know, like college students. And I was just so irritated with the way that they were like, so like carefree and silly and like they like in one scene they like climb up on the roof to look at the stars and and i'm like what shut up like i just couldn't read it like it was just i don't know so if if it sounds like your cup of tea i would i mean truly i would recommend it i just like was not in a place where i could tolerate oh my god like angsty teens um so I don't know, it, but it seemed like it was going to be a really good book. Well, I have one that seemed like it was going to be. Um, and it was good. It just wasn't what I had thought it was mm. going to be. So I had read um, in December Whiteout by Ariana Anders, and it mm -hmm. was like um, they were stuck in like an Arctic ooh, thing. Ooh, and they like danger banging. Danger banging. <laughs> Thank you. That is what I want in a romantic suspense. <laughs> So, um, yeah. this came up and I mean, you talked about I, this in the last episode because yes. I remember his forearms. I mean, come on. If any book is made for, um, me, like, so really interesting. Like both characters are interesting. Both have like some PTSD, mm. some things going on. There's like, um, so he's on like a rescue unit with the, with his dog, um, and they're practicing. She's out on a hike and like this bad storm is coming. Of course, mm. they like get thrown together. Um, but it is like the background about like his work with the dog. It's really interesting, like how mm. you prepare the dogs, um, his whole team that he's on. They're like an international team. So they would go into like earthquake zones. Like mm. so the first scene was him 
jumping out of a plane with the dog and how yeah. you do it safely. So like the dog is almost in like a bag and like how you do it. So like if you fall wrong, you won't like hurt the dog. Hmm. A lot of that was super interesting. Mm -hmm. um, they had good chemistry. Uh, just sorry, spoilers, if you like care about. <laughs> there is no, they don't like touch each other till like, I mean, they kind of like cuddle maybe 75% of the way in. And then like the last maybe 5%. I'm like, this is not romantic suspense. That's this so is, I don't annoying. know what it is. It's just suspense, suspense. Ew. I, I mean, <laughs> so I, I don't want to be totally negative. It just, it wasn't what I had thought that I was getting with this. Yeah. With this cover, I need like the, like, 20%, 40%. You, I mean, you Section need to be 60. like building up mm -hmm. and have a lot of um, like sex scenes in there. Yeah. This is just not the right format for oh, me. Oh man. So um, very promising. Yeah. That, that cover is deceiving. Yeah. I mean, if it was like... just like SEAL team, like, like if it was just like, and I've read those before, just sure. like straight mystery suspense fun, like do it <laughs> there, you know, but no. Nope, nope, nope. Don't have a beautiful buff forearm. Yeah, on come on, it's misleading. <sighs> so, um, <laughs> one. So <laughs> let's. <laughs> huh? I'm so mad. <laughs> uh, one of the best audiobook experiences I ever had. Ooh. I listened to um, Devolution by Matt. Uh, Max Brooks. So it's devolution, a firsthand account of the Rainer uh, Sasquatch massacre. Yeah, I I love Sasquatch. I don't know, like <laughs> that is like the creepiest. Oh, it just gives me chills. I love it. Um, this book made me. I was like, I can't take my dogs out to go potty at night. And like, Devin, you have to go and do it because I'm scared of the dark now of what could be uh, lurking in suburbia so here's the cover mm. um and it's written as if it's it's fiction it's but it's written as if it's non-fiction so it's written in like like an epistolary style of a diary this woman um goes to live in this like super high tech uh like utopia in the mountains of the pacific northwest um and there's like news articles and interviews and it's all made up. It's really interesting. Um, so she's in this, she goes, she's this, this woman's diary. She goes to live in this, in this like utopian high tech society. Well then Mount Rainer in Washington, Washington, I think erupts. Uh, and, and it, they, they sort of make it seem like the Mount St. Helens eruption from the seventies or eighties where mm -hmm. it like devastated it was, it, the explosion was like so bad that it, you know, devastated society for like weeks or whatever. So, so they're in this high tech society where everything is like automated by Wi-Fi and whatever, and their power goes out. So they have no power. They have no Wi-Fi. They have, they have nothing. They can't, they have no food because all their food was being uh, delivered by like drones and, you know, all this stuff. And so, and then they could, so they're like in this like they can't reach, they can't communicate with the outside world. They don't know what's going on. And then they find there's like these creatures in the woods and they're really big and they smell bad. <laughs> I'm just so scary. So the, the audiobook is read by a full cast, like an all-star yes. cast, including Judy Greer. Do you know who okay. Judy Greer is? Oh my God. Um, she does the, um, the character, the main character, Kate, it's her diaries. And Judy Greer just does a phenomenal job with the voice um, of this character. Who, and also speaking of Judy Greer, she's, I just found out she's a knitter, which just, That's crazy. I love her already, but that just like blew her into the stratosphere for me. Um, and then there's also, um, Jeff Daniels does some of the voices. He's Jeff Daniels from Dumb and Dumber and, um, Nathan Fillin from Firefly. Yes. Those are the only people I recognize. There's a whole bunch of other people. And what was cool is, so some of the, um, interviews like excerpts that they have in uh the book um are from the like big boss lady of the national park service or whatever and the i i can't remember her title but she's like the head ranger of you know one of the parks in where mount rainer is um the actual park 
management ranger does the voice for her character, Whoa. which is, is, I don't know, that's so cool. So excellent audiobook experience. The, the tension and the creepy and, you know, it's like, it's described as horror, but it's not like gore. gore. Yeah, it's not, well, there's some gore. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there's some gore, um, but like Devin is a big, he's a big wuss, but he, uh, he like loved this book, oh, so nice. yeah, it was really really good. I read World War Z. Okay, and that was that came out a while ago, mm -hmm. and it was really good. And then Judy Greer, it just made me look this up. Judy Greer was in my favorite audiobook ensemble cast, which is Daisy Jones and the Six. Oh my god! I think she's one of the the musicians. She's really really good. At she's it. fantastic. So she must have some like audiobook agent who's like getting her these awesome yeah. parts. <laughs> We love you, Judy Greer. Yay. We're going to talk. We're going to tag you. We'll send you yarn. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> that would be so cool. I'll s what? And stitch markers. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Do you want Judy Greer to be your new mommy? <laughs> so what else so, you got? I got one more. So when I was meal prepping, I needed an audiobook and, um, I don't know how that's got on my list, um, but it was on there. I think probably Faded Mates, everything they recommend, I like, mm -hmm. add to my list. Um, Not the Kind of Earl You Marry by Kate Pembroke. And I thought, well, I'll give this a try for 10 minutes. Four, five hours into it, I'm like, well, I guess this is a keeper. <laughs> um, and just, just what you want. It's, um, she's uh, like a wallflower spinster. He's uh, like an aspiring politician and nothing mm. in common. Um, there's an ad in the newspaper that they're betrothed and they're, they're mm. getting married and both of them. So he comes storming in. She lives with her brother and why did you place this? If you think you can trap me into this, mm. you've got another thing coming. I've dealt with other women like you and she's like you you know mm. i didn't do this and i wouldn't marry you ever mm. and he's like insulted because he's such a catch and uh, they decide um he's up for this big like political appointment um it would look bad for him if this was like if they backed out of it and it would look bad for her because she'd still maybe like to get married sometime sure. and it looks bad for either of them so they said let's go ahead with this for a few weeks oh i love fake relationships it, it's just <laughs> It's so good. So, like, of course, they have to, like, make a few appearances together. Mm -hmm. So, like, she wants to learn to, like, drive his, like, it's like the little two-person, like, carriage. So he, like, gives her lessons. And, of course, she's witty and mm. great. And he just falls for her. And, of course, he's sensitive and caring. And she sees him with, like, his family. He, she, he has a bunch of sisters and a bunch of nieces and nephews. And Aww. he's, like, a really good guy. Ugh, it's great. That I finished sounds... it in like uh, yesterday. So yeah, I started it Sunday. I finished it Monday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, it was like nice, really, really fun. Yeah, after uh, abandoning, you know, reading like twenty percent of a bunch of books and just abandoning them, I started. I was like, I gotta go back to a an old standby, and I started um, the next uh, Nevada Bar Ooh, book. Oh, yay. Um, so the one, I think I'm on number 14, and it's called Winter Study, and she's like at a, it's at, it's like in the winter, and she, um, at a park in Michigan, the Isle, Ro Isle Royale um, Island Park on in uh, Lake Superior, and they're studying wolves. So there's cool. like wolf stuff, and there's, um, they think there's, there may be a, is it Windigo or Windigo? You know the the like monster or whatever yeah. the um Don't know. Yeah. So uh yeah, it's creepy. And it's good. I love Nevada Bar. She's never disappointed me yet. That's why I did that Beverly Jenkins last yeah. time. It was so good. And then I think so now I'm gonna go back and do the Ariana Anders um one. There's a female pilot that was rescuing people mm. in the other arctic one and the next book is her book so i'm gonna have to go mm -hmm. do it because i will get my danger banging that yeah. i was looking for uh for the next couple episodes i i think i'm gonna do it'll be a two-parter um about how to get started with your like knitting pattern designs how to write your own patterns and uh resources that i like and um Sarah just told me she had dabbled in pattern design, but never like got all the way through and did anything with it. So love to hear about it. Yeah, we'll um, we'll do that in the next couple episodes, uh, and then um, 
next episode 29 we will check in with your uh empty just totally empty it just it's nothing in there now you guys <laughs> We'll check in with your make-along projects. Uh, and then the first episode in May, we will finish up um, the make-along and pick a winner for the giveaway. So um, make sure you're tagging us on Instagram and um, subscribe to our channel. That helps us a lot. Uh, we have almost a 1,000 YouTube followers now, which is friggin' amazing. Yeah. So thanks for that. I think, I think that's it. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Thanks. Bye, you guys.